In order to understand gynecological diseases and gynecological laparoscopic surgery, it is important to first understand the normal female pelvic anatomy. This is a diagrammatic representation of the front view of a female reproductive system. This is the uterus. This is the cervix and this is the vagina. This is the left ovary and this is the right ovary. This is the left fallopian tube and this is the right fallopian tube. The uterus or womb is a hollow pear-shaped organ with a thick muscular wall. It is subdivided into two parts, the corpus or body of the uterus and the cervix or neck of the uterus. The corpus comprises the fundus which is the top portion of the uterus and the cavity of the uterus. The cavity is where the embryo and fetus develops during pregnancy. The inner layer or the lining of the uterus is called the endometrium. Every month it thickens in preparation for potential pregnancy and sheds during menstruation if pregnancy does not occur. The middle layer of the uterus is known as the myometrium. It is mainly composed of smooth muscle cells which collectively give the uterus the strength to contract and expel the fetus during childbirth. The outermost layer of uterus is the serosa, also known as the perimetrium. The cervix is a lower constricted segment of the uterus that joins the upper part of vagina. The small cervical opening into the vagina is called external os, while the one in the uterine cavity is called the internal os. They allow the sperm to enter the uterus during sexual intercourse and the menstrual fluid to flow out of the uterus during menstruation. The cervix can be visualized from the vagina. The vagina is a muscular narrow canal that extends from the vaginal opening called introitus to the cervix. It is also known as the birth canal due to the fact that the fetus passes through it to be born during natural childbirth. The inner wall of the vagina is surfaced with numerous folds of soft, elastic mucous membrane called vaginal rugae. This allows the vagina to expand considerably during sexual intercourse or childbirth. During menstruation, the vagina provides a channel for menstrual fluid to flow out of the body. The ovaries are small, oval-shaped, pad glands that are attached to each side of the uterus via a thin, fibrous ovarian ligament. The pear is responsible for storing and nurturing immature egg cells to become mature eggs. Every month, one of the ovaries release a mature egg into its neighboring fallopian tube. In addition to producing eggs, the ovaries produce two main female sex hormones, the estrogen and progesterone which are vital in regulating menstrual cycles. The fallopian tube, sometimes simply called tubes, are the two channels that connect the ovaries to the uterus. They are the main structures that facilitate fertilization. Each tube is divided into five main portions. Pimbriae the fringe-like structure located at the end of the tube that captures an egg released from the ovary and draws it into the tube. Infundibulum, the funnel-like structure of the tube which is margined by the fimbriae. Ampulla, the longest portion of the tube with a thin wall almost muscle-free and white lumen. It is usually the portion where fertilization takes place. Isthmus, the almost straight portion of the tube with a relatively thick muscular wall and with the narrowest lumen. Interstitium, the portion of the tube that is closest to the uterus. It is sometimes known as the uterine portion of the tube for the fact that it lies within the uterus. The inner lining of the fallopian tube is made up of finger-like projections called the cilia. These cilia are important in assisting the movement of the eggs 
towards the uterine cavity and the sperms into the ampulla of the fallopian tube. This is a different view of the female pelvis. It is how the pelvis looks when a gynecologist looks at the pelvis either through a laparotomy, which is a large incision on the abdomen, or through a laparoscope, a keyhole surgery. The uterus is in the center. This is the right fallopian tube and this is the right ovary. This is the left fallopian tube and this is the left ovary. In front or anterior of the uterus is the urinary bladder. Behind or posterior to the uterus is the rectum. A slippery membrane called the peritoneum covers the whole pelvis and abdomen. Beneath the peritoneum on either side of the pelvis runs the ureters. The ureter is a small tube that carries urine and runs from the kidney to the bladder. Large blood vessels are present on both sides of the pelvis. These blood vessels carry blood from the heart to both the legs and back. This is the side view of the pelvis and abdomen. The uterus is in the center. On the side and behind the uterus are the fallopian tubes and the ovaries. In front of the uterus is the urinary bladder and behind it is the rectum. This diagram shows the urinary system. The ureters connect the kidneys to the urinary bladder. The ureters are found behind the peritoneum on the pelvic side walls. They run below the ovaries and on the side of the cervix under the uterine arteries before entering the bladder via the ureteric tunnel. Ureters are important structures to identify during gynecological surgeries. This is a laparoscopic view of a normal female pelvic anatomy. This is the uterus. Behind the uterus is the rectum. This is the right ovary and this is the right fallopian tube. This is the left fallopian tube and this is the left ovary. This is the left ureter. This is the right ureter. In front of the uterus is the urinary bladder. This is the appendix. This is the liver. This is the stomach. These are intestines. Injection of the dye showed the left tube to be patent and the right tube is also patent.